be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Jesus took Peter, James, and John and led them up a high mountain apart by themselves. And he was transfigured before them, and his clothes became dazzling white, such as no fuller on earth could bleach them. Then Elijah appeared to them along with Moses, and they were conversing with Jesus. Then Peter said to Jesus in reply, Rabbi, it is good that we are here. Let us make three tents, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. He hardly knew what to say. They were so terrified. Then a cloud came casting a shadow over them. From the cloud came a voice. This is my beloved son. Listen to him. Suddenly, looking around, they no longer saw anyone but Jesus alone with them. As they were coming down the mountain, he charged them not to relate what they had seen to anyone except when the Son of Man had risen from the dead. So they kept the matter to themselves, questioning what rising from the dead meant. The Gospel of the Lord. So, how is your Lent going? Have you already broken one of your Lenten promises? Anybody? Okay. This is a common thing we do during Lent, give up something. I gave up chocolate, I gave up TV, I gave up whatever. That's kid stuff. As adults, we have matured physically, emotionally, and hopefully spiritually. One of Matthew Kelly's books is titled, Don't Give Up Chocolate for Lent. Now that's a relief. So what is this Lent thing we do? This year I'm hearing from a lot of non-Catholic Christians asking, what is Lent? Why Ash Wednesday? Oh, they want to get schmutzed, but don't know why. Well, it's because the church is giving out something for free, exactly, right? Which, lent, which uh, gives rise to the Cape Catholic, the nominal Catholic. You know what a Cape Catholic is? It's a Catholic who shows up four times a year. Christmas, ashes, palms, and Easter. Don't be a Cape Catholic. The church teaches that Lent is a 40-day season of prayer, fasting, and almsgiving that begins on Ash Wednesday and ends at sundown on Holy Thursday. It is a period of preparation to celebrate the Lord's resurrection at Easter. Prayer, fasting, and almsgiving. Improve your prayer life, deny yourselves, and care for the poor through the corporal works of mercy. Now, if you ask the common Catholic, the knee-jerk reaction is, oh, it's something we give up and we don't eat meat on Fridays. Well, again, that's a kid's answer. There's more to it than that. That's the fasting part. I gave up chocolate, I gave up whatever. Again, who has already broken their Lenten promise? How about your New Year's resolution? You remember that one? That was months ago. You know what? I've made a New Year's resolution that I have never broken. One year I resolved never to make a New Year's resolution. You know what? I'm keeping it to this day. Simple. Prayer, fasting, and almsgiving. Prayer. Commit yourself to a new devotion during these 40 days. Before Corona time, during Lent, all parishes had 
stations on the cross during the week, usually on Fridays. When I was pastor of a parish in Southern Maryland, we'd have a fish fry every Friday night that began after Stations of the Cross. Meanwhile, while we're all sitting in the main church, you know, praying the Stations of the Cross, having fasted that day, you know, the Knights of Columbus are in the hall, deep frying oysters and fish and everything else. And meanwhile, you know, we're praying. That was, that was a real Lenten discipline. In the Archdiocese of Washington, we had the light is on for you every Wednesday night in the Archdiocese of Washington and the Diocese of Arlington, which was just right across the Potomac River. In every Catholic church on Wednesday nights, starting at 6 p.m., confessions were being heard. Also, adoration of the Blessed Sacraments. Other things you can do. Now, in this socially distant, I hate that phrase. When is it going to end? In this socially distanced time, we can still do all of these things and more. Guess what? It takes your initiative to do it. Pray the Stations of the Cross. Pray the Rosary. Pray the Divine Mercy Chaplets. And you know what? Do it religiously. Fasting. The Church imposed discipline of fast and abstinence. It's actually pretty easy compared to all the other religious devotions in the world. The Catholic Church has the easiest fasting discipline. You abstain from meat and you fast on Ash Wednesday and Good Friday. Once, you know, one main meal and two smaller meals. Fridays during Lent, you abstain from eating meats. What are we trying to accomplish with this discipline? To deny ourselves so that we can rely on God, to let go of earthly bonds so that we can reach for heavenly realities. When I used to teach or preach to children about the season of Lent, you know, I'd always make them stand up. Okay, all right, now. Reach, okay, now reach down and touch your toes, okay? Now grab your toes and hold on to them really tight. Now reach for the sky, but don't let go. Kind of hard to do that when you can't let go and you read. So you gotta let go of earthly bonds. You know what you can give up for Lent that frees you to reach for heaven? Your sins! That is one promise you can keep. I'm going to go to confession during Lent, and hopefully more than once. So, go ahead and confess your sins, and then eat your chocolate without guilt. What are you doing to care for the poor? There are many in need. Have you driven past the uni parking lot on a Thursday morning? Cleveland Food Bank is doing food distributions. The line of traffic, the line of cars is miles long, snaking through the streets of Cleveland, getting to the uni lot to pick up their food. There's a good organization to donate to. We also have these rice bowls. They're, 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 they're in the back of the church. You know, something again, something for kids to do, but you know, everyone else can do this too. Build a little bowl, stick your coins in there and you return it. I was talking to the pastor, I think it's during Holy Week. More information on when to turn these in, but these are in the back of the church. So, give of yourselves and be Christ to others. Do you trust God? I mean, do you really trust Him? I mentioned the Divine Mercy devotion, the image of Divine Mercy, what's the inscription on the bottom? Jesus, I trust in you. Conforming our lives to that of God's will can be difficult, especially when the burden of the cross causes us to stumble and fall at times. When we trust him, we know that he will care for us. God put Abraham to the test. 
He called to him, Abraham, here I am, he replied. Notice he responds immediately, here I am. Then God said, take your son Isaac, your only one whom you love, and go to the land of Moriah. There we shall offer him up as a holocaust on a height that I will point out to you. Can we reply to God in the same manner as Abraham? Is your faith as strong as Abraham's? You know, he is called our father in faith. The Abraham of the Jews, the Abraham of the Muslims, and the Abraham of the Christians. It's the same guy, by the way. That's a different topic for a religious education, but he is the father of faith for all of those faiths. Abraham trusted God, and God stayed his hand and established a covenant. I will bless you abundantly and make your descendants as countless as the stars of the sky and the sands of the seashore. This ancient scripture reading that we've heard from is a, what scripture callers call a prefigurement. It is something from the Old Testament that points to the New. The parallel is obvious. It is the prefigurement of Abraham and Isaac to the Father's offering of his only begotten Son. In today's gospel, we have the transfiguration of the Lord where we, he becomes radiant in his glory on Mount Tabor. The apostles see him for who he is, the Messiah, with Moses and Elijah. Now, as faithful Christians, we know who he is, but can we see him for what he is? distractions of our earth or reality blind us to this reality. We have to see with our hearts and our souls. How can we do this with a poison of sin attaining our lives? Give up your sins for Lent. Prayer keeps us in constant dialogue with him, denying ourselves places our trust in him. In caring for others, we become Christ to others. Prayer, fasting, and alms giving. And then with that, then, then we can see Jesus for who.